you to everyone that's uh, attending the Southern California Football Coaches Association virtual clinic. Uh, we're excited to have our next speaker here, Coach Jay Wilkinson. He's the offensive coordinator and the quarterbacks coach at Fayetteville High School. His topic for this session is attacking multiple coverages with the passing game. Coach, it's all yours. Thank you for your time. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Coach. And I uh, just want to give a give a quick thanks to Coach Rice and the Southern California Coach Association for having me on. Uh, real excited to uh, to get this thing rolling. It's been uh, we had spring ball uh, this morning at uh, six thirty, bright and early, and then uh, we're kind of still in a transit. Um, transformation family wise so i'm back in tulsa actually tonight so um real quick guys i'm going to put my uh contact information up here uh if anybody needs anything like if you want to copy this presentation anything like that feel free to reach out to me either via email or my twitter there uh, you can see uh at jay wilkinson um like coach said i'm the offense coordinator quarterback coach at fayetteville high school in fayetteville arkansas um just got there March 1st. Uh, prior to that, uh, been all over kind of Oklahoma, um, most recently at, at, at Broken Arrow. So any of you guys that have been on the Run the Power podcast, um, Rowdy Harper and Brady, those both those guys were at Broken Arrow, um, actually kind of came back behind Brady, but Rowdy was the offensive line coach there uh, while I was at, at BA for four years. So uh, anyway, enough of that. I'm going to get rolling. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to to, to pop them in there and I'll try to check the um, the question box. But uh, just in talking about this, so in today's day and age, you know, when I first started out back in, you know, calm plays back in 2003, uh, you know, it seemed like you go into a game, you kind of always kind of knew what you were getting uh, from an offensive standpoint. And now, um, you know, everybody's playing different coverages. So some of the, the things that we talked to our quarterbacks about, we game plan around um, on the weekend, just, you know, everything kind of classifies for us generically as middle field open or middle field close. And so if you're a middle field open team, if you're a quarters team, do they play palms? Are they reading two? Um, you know, are they just a straight quarters team? Um, how do they play three by one? Do they play, you know, um, stubby or mini or do they do they poach the backside? You know, how wh th those are some of the questions that we ask. How do they play the single side? What do they do to trips? Um, and then, you know, also like, how does their underneath coverage play? Do they, do they reroute routes? Do they carry them vertically? Do they spot drop? Uh, what are some of the things that they do with their underneath coverage? Um, so those are some of the questions kind of we ask in quarters. Uh, then also like in that middle of the field family, middle field open family, we talk about cover two. Are they, we don't see a whole lot of cover two. Usually we see it as kind of a half field coverage uh, to one side, but it's something that we always talk about because every now and then uh, we'll see a team that'll come out and kind of talk about it. And so we, we talk about, you know, okay, cover two, is it man under, is it zone under? Because now if it's man under halves, now it's a whole different ball game. And usually you see a bunch of that uh, in, in the seven on seven in the summer. Is it, is it zone under, you know, cover two? So then we got to start talking about hole shots and finding windows uh, for our wide receivers. And then we classify cover zero as middle field open, like, hey, here it comes, it's blitz, it's cap man, uh, quarterback, you need to have a plan somewhere to go with the football. And then opposed to that, we get our middle of the field closed coverages, which just simply we kind of put into the category, it's either cover three or cover one. Now, obviously there's a bunch of different ways that they can play cover three. They can play, you know, cover three cloud to the boundary, cover three cloud to the field. They could sky it down, they can just line up in it. They could play blitz three. And then you get cover one where you can play just straight cover one with one high safety free man under, or you can get some of the cover one wrap stuff that you're getting. And then even more commonly now, kind of a combination of both when you start talking about all the rip ledge coverages. So again, when you, I guess the point of showing you guys this is, as we get through this, these are all the things that we have to talk about when we call a pass pattern. Okay. So we don't just don't want to call a pass route and pray that they come out in the coverage we want. We want to give our quarterbacks options. Uh, as we go forward. Uh, before we kind of get into the route, some of the things that, that I've kind of picked up, and I got this from Coach Dunn at OSU, but we have defined landmarks that our wide receivers and our quarterbacks know. And so to, to start out all the way outside over here, you know, we have the ticks, okay? So the area of the field out there where, you know, the little yard lines are painted on the sidelines, we want our wide receivers to know, hey, that, that you know, where the ticks are, all right? 
Then we have the bottom of the numbers and the top of the numbers we define. So some routes we want on the bottom, some routes we want on the top. Some alignments we want on the bottom, some alignments we want on the top. Obviously the hash, which you'd be surprised, we've got nine traders in our system now that when I say, hey, you know, line up on the hash, they kind of look at me and I'm like, hey dude, those, those, those are, you know, the, the yard lines there kind of in the middle of the field divided into thirds. We talk about near upright and far upright. And then over here on the left side now, um, the divide for us is the area basically between the numbers and the hash, okay? And so, you know, that's been big because a lot of times, you know, that number two receiver, uh, maybe to the field, we want some routes where we want him more in the divide than we do the hash. And so to give it that definition has been helpful for us. Then a lot of times we talk about just the paint, okay? It's like we run a post, we're going to push to 10 yards and we want that guy breaking in the paint. All right, so we say, hey, when your foot hits, we want it somewhere in the paint of the numbers. So I don't care if it's the top or the bottom, it just needs to be in the paint of the numbers. And then the edge is kind of, you know, a lot of people I've seen it, you know, they, they have the red line out there, but that edge is the area between the numbers, basically in the sideline. And that's where we want, you know, when we start talking about hole shots and stuff like that, we want those receivers working out kind of edge ticks versus cover two out in that hole. So again, just wanted to show you that. I think having really defined areas on the field can kind of narrow the focus down to your quarterback. And we are now a no huddle team. And so being no huddle, it, it helps us within practice to really go out there and be able to communicate, hey, line up on the top, 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 or bottom, 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 and the kids know what we're talking about. Okay, so the first one we're gonna talk about. So picture a three by one formation, okay? So this is to the single side. All right, so used to we would line up and we would throw like quick out or we would throw a stop route or something like that. And we never could get it right because it seemed like every time we thought we were gonna get soft, we got pressed and we thought we were gonna get pressed and we wanna call fade, we got soft coverage. And so for us, the gas stands for basically go or stop, all right? So we're gonna push off vertical, all right? Like it's a go for five yards. When he gets to five yards, the single receiver now, is going to decide, okay, what he's going to do at five. If he's even or he's got, he's climbed past the corner, he's got him beat, then he's running a fade, all right? If he gets to five and the corner has belled or the corner soft and he knows he just can't get by him, basically he's going to take what we say, we say two more steps. So that's going to put him to seven to eight yards. And he's going to basically run what we would call a stop route. Okay. So he, it's kind of like a back shoulder fade or a fade stop. So he gets to five. He hasn't got the guy beat. He pushes two more steps. He turns back inside and then he works a little bit of a negative angle back out to the sideline. All right. Um, now let's go back to just if he, if he gets corner beat. One of the key coaching points for us is if you get the corner beat on this route, we really want you to stack the route. Okay, we really want you to stack the corner, all right? The only time we wouldn't stack the corner is if we were getting a cover two look, okay? So if we got cloud and a half field safety, then basically we wanna climb to this area out here to the edge and try to catch the ball and what we would define as the hole, the area between the corner and the safety, all right? Now for us, quarterback wise, we're coming out and we're saying, okay, do we have one-on-one -on -one over here? If I have one-on-one, -on -one, it's done. I'm throwing this. So we call this side basically our yes, no, all right? So if it's yes, I'm done with my route. I'm throwing it over here no matter what. If I don't have one-on-one, -on -one, so I have a corner for sure, if the linebacker is in a position where he can get underneath the stop, or if the safety is off the hash where we can get cloud and, and the safety over the top, then we're playing the concept that we have to the other side. And I'll show you that here in a second. All right, so, so let's look at some gas. So here we've got gas down at the bottom, all right? So again, we get pressed, and I tell our kids all the time, we're thinking go right here, we'll run the fade, all right? But every now and then we'll get some teams that'll press bell. So, hey, we're still using our rule. We're gonna decide at five what happens, all right? So here we've got press at the bottom, it stays pressed. So we've won now at five yards. I'm even I'm or I'm over the top. Now I just want to stack this thing and give the quarterback room. And we don't really do a great job stacking, but we win by so much. Our quarterback knows we've got one-on-one -on -one down here at the bottom. All we've got to do is deliver a ball. And I really like where he's at because, again, we talked to that guy about don't be outside the edge. 
give the quarterback from the edge to the sidelines to throw the football. All right, and I talk to the quarterbacks all the time. The one given about throwing the football is if the ball hits out of bounds, they'll never call it a completion. So we always want to keep the ball on the field of play. All right, that's kind of the running joke. Every time they throw the ball and it hits out of bounds or out of the back of the end zone, I can say, listen, it doesn't matter what we do, that ball's never going to be complete. We got to get it in the field of play. All right, so good ball, good catch. Again, pretty easy stuff right there, right? So here's actually one from this year. Again, we are three practices in. So this is one of our earlier install practices. So this is, uh, it looks like early in the year, it's a little bit chilly. Again, we come out. Okay, we've got a corner. Now we're looking for, okay, is this guy in a position to double? Is this guy in a position to double? If we felt like either one of those guys were in a position to double, then we play the trip side route. If we don't feel like they're in a position to double, then we're throwing the one-on-one. -on -one. So we catch the ball. We kind of feel like the safety's opening back up to trip. We saw press, we leave it on. Good job right there. Now stacking again and kind of leaving. You can see we're in the edge. We've got, we're leaving the quarterback enough room to throw the ball over outside shoulder. Okay, so again, this is early. We'd like to see that ball elevate a little bit more outside. All right, you guys kind of get my drift. Okay, so now, now we've got soft corner. Okay, so it's soft corner. Safety's inside the hash, so we assume that he's probably not going to double. We look out here at either one of these linebackers. Are they in a position where they can get underneath the, the stop part of this route? No, probably not. So, hey, it's one-on-one -on -one is yes, I'm playing this side. So I'm going to look down here at the bottom. Again, you can see I want to drive off for five. Don't predetermine it. That guy's still backing up. I want to take two more steps. And now, again, I'm going to hinge. So I look inside, and I should work back down the stem this way to the sideline. The most common thing young kids will want to do is they want to open up straight to the sidelines, and then that allows the corner to jump underneath this thing. All right, so again, we're right back down, okay? And again, we tell the quarterbacks, hey, miss back downhill right here. Make the receiver go where he wants you to go, all right? And then we get the ball in space to our guy, and then it's up to him to, to make somebody miss. Uh, another look at it down here at the bottom. Again, soft corner. Linebackers tucked inside. Safety's over. Should be, hey, pretty easy. I'm going to catch one, two, three, and I'm going to throw this ball down the fire. So we, we use a quick three on this because we're deciding what we want to do. So we can't just rock or step throw because we don't know if he's going to run a stop or a fade. We're still reading this thing on the run. So we want to take just a quick three just to kind of time it out right. All right, so we can get the ball ready to go. And again, all right, this receiver probably takes this one a little bit too deep. So at five, he should take two more. Okay, and then work right back downhill. All right, but again, you know, throw it to your special kid into the boundary. Sometimes good things can happen. All right, let me give you guys one more of these, and I think you guys get the drift. All right, so here it is at the top. Again, so now we've got soft corner. We've got safety outside, linebacker tucked inside. Okay, so even though the safety's off the hash with the corner being soft, we feel like we're going to get this thing. All right, so again, it's kind of a little bit lazy job here. We're in a two-minute mode right here at the end of the game. But again, you guys can kind of see the route now. Hey, plant and come back down this way. We we're hoping to get this ball caught and get out of bounds. All right, we kind of get tackled. Looks like the ref stopped it and gave us one right there. All right, so, so that's the gas part of it, okay? So now let's progress on to, and again, now this could be whatever you guys wanted. This year at Broken Arrow, we were 11 personnel team. We ran a lot of stick over here, okay? You could run some four-man snag type concepts over here where you ran a, like a double set. Okay, whatever, whatever kind of fits your boat to the trip side. So kind of whatever your best route is. But again, for us, the question always is, do we have one-on-one? -on -one? If we've got it, this is where we start. If the answer is no, then we've got to play whatever concept coach has got called to this side. All right. So let me get to kind of what we've been doing here recently. So this has kind of replaced stick for us. All right. So we just call it branch. All right. So stick, branch, kind of play of words. So now outside, we're basically getting our hitch slot fade. So number one's got a six yard hitch, okay? Two's gonna run right at the defender over him, and then he's gonna push to the bottom of the numbers, okay? Three for us is run a stick. So if it's 
a detached wide receiver, he's going to run a five yard basically hitch. But the reason we say it's a stick is because he can uncover away. We don't ever let him uncover back inside. So he's going to turn inside. If he's getting matched, he's going to uncover away. If it's a tight end, okay, some type of tight end in the core, then we're automatically going to push to five and turn out. Okay. And then again, if we're getting matched, we can work out. So that's kind of the difference between the two routes and why I have them both drawn in. Okay. So quarterback, what we do is now, okay. So again, we've got gas over here on our right side. We don't like it. So now we're playing branch. Okay. So branch for us is we're going to pre-snap if we like the stick or not. If we like the stick, we're going to rock or step. We're going to put it on that guy. Okay. Whether it's matchup, whether we're out leveraged the linebacker, whatever we like, we're going to take it. Okay. If we don't like the stick, then we're basically playing now the slot fade. Okay. So if the corner's soft, we take the hitch. If the corner's being nosy, then we're throwing the slot fade. And what we tell the quarterback on the slot fade, okay, as we take a drop right here and we read the corner up, again, we're kind of quick three right here because we're going to have to decide, okay, as I take my quick three, I want to throw it basically right over the top of this guy's head, all right? So as he steps on toes and breaks out, that gives me the landmark that I want as a quarterback. I want to throw this thing where he continues on his angle and catches it basically right over the top of his head. Okay, so I tell him all the time, hey, just aim right over his helmet and keep him on that diagonal, okay? So uh, let's look at some branch. So these are all from this year, okay? I even got one, I think, on here from today, okay? So and, and when we make these teaching tapes, guys, and I, I got this from somebody, I can't remember who it was, but we always try to do them in the order of the throw. So like right now for us, the order is stick first. So when we make these teach tapes, uh, which is basically where I pull these from, it's going to be basically show all the quarterbacks the stick routes first, all right? So, so he, since he's the first read. So here it is. He likes the stick. Now, because it, he knows where he's kind of going right here, we're going to rocker step, bang it right on his outside number, all right? Again, ball's not real accurate. It needs to be on his outside. But you can see the leverage there that we've created that it's, you know, it, it again, our guy's wide open right in there, all right? So boom, put it on him, all right? Receiver, go get what you can get, all right? Here it is out of empty. So disregard this side. Okay, we've got a different combination here, but we've got branch working right here. So we've got step on toes, slot fade, six yard hitch outside, stick by three. You can see the stick right now is kind of out leveraged the linebacker. So basically it's like catch, rocker, step, throw right here for the quarterback. It should be catch, rocker, step, ball, put on his outside number. And again, now the receiver should trust that guy. And again, we haven't done this long enough, but you should trust it. Hey, the ball's on the outside. You know the linebacker, excuse me. You know the linebacker's working from inside out. Turn away from that guy so you maximize your yards after catch. Okay. So that's the stick part of it. Here's one more, I think. These are young kids right here. Okay, we've got pads on. So this is one of this has been within the last week. Okay, again. And, and the, the big deal for us is stick. We talk to our guys all the time. Everything needs to look vertical. Everything needs to look vertical. Everything needs to look vertical. So for, for the first three or four steps here, it should look like it's four vert over here. Okay. We want to make the coverage sink, the underneath coverage sink. And that way you uncover yourself. So right here at the bottom, okay, again, our quarterback's kind of reading this one, okay, so he doesn't rock or step. He's going to quick three this because, again, we're kind of getting some crazy stuff on the backside, so we're seeing if we get one-on-one -on, -one on the backside. But he's going to take three and bang this hitch right on his outside, and that's where we want to, again, trust it, turn outside, and maximize your yard after catch. Again, these are young guys doing it. But, again, just by getting that ball placed on the outside number, him turning outside, be, we need wanting to be a little bit tighter right here, tight turn, but he go make two or three extra yards right there. Okay. All right. So here we go. I think these are hitches now. Okay. So we're kind of getting, yeah. So now we're getting matched. We don't like our leverage here. So now we're going to read this thing out with the slot fade. Okay. So obviously corner looks a little soft right here. Okay. But we're still going to read this thing. So we, he's going to rocker this. Okay, again, this is kind of early, all right, because he kind of he, he kind of feels like, hey, that guy's soft enough. I can get it out there. We'd prefer him to go quick three just in case the corner were to bluff us, all right, because we talk a lot of times of 
corners lie to us, the triangle doesn't. Okay, so right here, he's going to basically kind of rocker step this. But you can see now the sticks match. Here's the hitch part of this thing. Okay, so again, we want the hitch to be in the paint. Okay, we want him in the paint out here. So that way, basically, this guy can't route the, reroute the slot fade and cover you. All right. Again, uh, we're kind of in just in uh, helmets only mode right here. Here's a drone shot. Okay, I think of the hitch to the top. Okay, so you can see right here what the quarterback's seeing. Hey, it's maps. I don't like it. Okay, slot fade out here. Where's the corner? He's high. Man, it's hitch all day long. Hitch be in the paint. Good location for the hitch to be. Sticks match. We're not going to get the slot fade open. Bang the hitch right now. All right. Again, all kinds of room right there. Now, hey, tight turn and go. All right. We're losing yards right there with the young kid. All right. This is, hey, this is, this is me uh, grinding for you guys right here. Okay. This is live from today. We got a ton of rain in Northwest Arkansas. So this is live. So this is the slot fade part. So I know this video part's not very good. You can see the basically the, the sticks getting matched right here. All right. But now we're taking the slot fade. Quarterback kind of takes one on the chin right here. So we got to stay straight back. We're giving up a little penetration. But you can see the slot fade, how we want it basically right over his head down here. Okay. So again, that ball's thrown over the top of the DB. All right to the bottom of the numbers right here, all right? You can see the corners has been nosy. I got a better shot right here in just a second. The corner's been nosy, so that's where the slot fade side of it comes, all right? So that's live from today. Here's a pole camera view of it. So we've got a painter stick back behind, okay? So the sticks match. The corner's been nosy. Now step on toes and go. Throw it right over the top of his head, quarterback. You can kind of see this one kind of cuts off, but again, I want you guys to basically be able to see out here, all right? So here again, here's some young kids doing it early. Let me fast forward. We got young kids, just like everybody else, can't get lined up, all right? So we don't like the stick, it's matched, okay? Now the corner's tight, so we're gonna go step on toes and go, and right now we wanna be throwing this thing over the top of his head. So right now, quarterback, throw it right over the top of his head. I don't think this one's complete, but you can see how we wanna keep him on that angle. All right, this is not complete, but again, I just want to show you guys the angle of the route right there. Okay, so again, that's how we make it work. Again, to kind of tie all this in together for everybody, do we have one-on-one? -on -one? No, we don't. Do we like the stick? No, we don't. Okay, it's hitch to slot fade. Okay, and so that's kind of how we build everything. We feel like that's really good, basically, versus all those different coverages uh, that I had on there on the first slide. All right, let me roll through this. I'm gonna get to another one. Okay, so again, we're back in three by one. All right, quasi quick game right here. Sold this from LSU a couple years ago. Okay, so now for us, it's edge. So now the number one receiver will kind of have a reduced split. So we want him just a tad bit inside the top of the number. Okay, and he's gonna run an eight yard corner. Okay, so he's gonna push up to eight and he's gonna break this thing Okay, and our general rule is we want to run out of bounds at 25 yards, okay? But we give him a little bit of freedom. To, we want to say, hey, we want to try to keep our angle to grass right here, okay? So if the corner's down, we want to kind of keep this thing high. If the corner is high above you, then we want to kind of roll this thing away from the corner, okay? We put the back now in the flat right now. So he runs an arrow. So we're basically going to, basically what we tell the back is, you aim for one yard, okay, past the line of scrimmage, and as soon as you break the contain, look for the ball, and that's basically going to put you, okay, almost on the line of scrimmage, all right, if that makes sense, okay? So for us, quarterback-wise now, we just read this thing corner to back, and then I'll show you guys the route that we're bringing back in their vision from this side, okay? So that's the front side of this thing. On the back side of it now, we call demons. So picture over here, we're running quick corner, tail back on the on the, on the, the arrow route. And now we're gonna bring number three, he's gonna run a 10 yard dig, work a negative angle. So you can see, we draw this thing where we want him to, if he breaks at 10, we want him to work back across the opposite hash at nine. Okay, and I tell our guys all the time, we're doing that for your safety, 
That way, if this backside safety, we throw the dig and he drives the route, you get hit, but it not, doesn't knock your teeth out. If you have a positive angle right here, that's when the ball gets picked or you go to the dentist, all right? So we want you to work a negative angle. Two's going to work a shallow right now. So he's coming right off three's butt and he's hauling tail to get in this quarterback's vision, all right? And then number one runs a five yard in, doesn't have to be in a hurry. He's the last read in this thing, okay? So let me get to some film and I'll show you how we read this thing. This quarterback comes up. If we get one-on-one, -on -one, we're throwing the X the ball right here on the quick corner, okay? If he gets doubled, whether it be the corner low and the safety over the top or the corner high and the linebacker underneath it, we take the ball to the back right now, okay? So it takes two people to take the quick corner away from it. If two people take the quick corner away, we're taking the back. If the back is matched by a linebacker, so let's say the corner and the safety, okay, buys the, the, the quick corner route and the linebacker matches the running back, then that's where we get back to the shallow working in our vision, the shallow is three to the dig, and then the five yard in, which we've hit a couple times in seven on seven, I don't have film of, is kind of our late outlet throw. Okay, so here we go. So here we go right down here at the bottom again. Okay, and why I tell the quarterback is if the corner's soft, okay, we need to be throwing this guy the ball unless there's somebody just standing right in between you and him where you can't get it to him. You've got to make the corner work to make this route work, all right? So again, there, he doesn't feel like this linebacker is going to make this throw tough. Again, when we break on this thing, okay, break to grass. Don't leave your route high where the corner can play back under it. We're going to break this thing almost out, all right? And we're going to drive this ball right in that window. Okay, so now you can see right here where if this linebacker were to really be underneath this window, all right, the back's wide open. Okay, and most people say the back's open now, but we want to make this route work. Okay, we feel like we don't want to get talked out of just dumping the ball down to the back. Okay, we want to we want to hit this thing just a little bit down the field in this pocket. All right, so I see a question right up here. Uh Progression to get Connie the X, take the running back, cornerback take the running back, free safety take the X. Okay, so if the if the if the um, if we get like some type of cone, let me get back here. All right, so if we get some type of like I think what coach is saying if we get some type of like cloud over here, right? So so some type of cone coverage, right, where the corner's down, then we've got to take this route a little bit higher right here and try to fit this thing in the hole. And again, we'll read, if the corner's back underneath it, elevating the throw, then we take the back. If the corner's down, we basically want to throw this thing out here in the hole, all right, uh, in the edge between the corner and the safety right there. So I hope that answers your question, Coach, but we want to make both of those guys take that route away before we get to the back or the shallow. All right, so hopefully that answers your question. See, yeah, same one, all right. All right, so again, you guys can see that. So let's go to the next one. Again, I try to put these kind of in the order of the progression. So here it is. Again, we've got a real cut split here at the top. All right, so again, now he gets one-on-one. -on -one. He's got to win versus one-on-one. -on -one. So we tell him, hey, break this at a good angle right here. We're away from this guy, all right? We're not worried about this guy deep back here, okay? We're running our route off of this guy right here. All right, the corner. The linebacker, again, I know what everybody's saying. The back's wide open. But we want to make this work. We train our guys. If that's one on one, typically the boundary wide receivers are dude. We want to get that guy the football. All right. So again, pretty good throw right here. Good catch. All right. Let me see. If we got the ends. Uh, we ends on cut off on this. Okay. Here it is again down at the bottom. All right. So again, now we get soft corner. Okay. We get the linebacker trying to elevate it, but the quarterback feels like he can fit it in. So again, I give him the freedom. I say, hey. If you can throw this thing in there, throw it to him, okay? If you miss high and you miss out of bounds, then that tells us that we probably should have thrown the ball to the back, okay? Now, you can see right here how this would work. If this linebacker were to elevate this throw and this linebacker were to match the back, you can see now where the shallow is working back into this window right here, okay? even the dig, all right? So again, it's been a good little route. We've got a couple double moves off of it that, that, that we've run. Um, 
Here it is again down at the bottom. Okay, so now this one, okay. Now nobody covers the back, okay. So the quarterback, he's got either throw. He's got the one-on-one, -on -one, which probably honestly in film, I said, hey, we should have thrown this guy the ball, all right. But sometimes you tell your guys, hey, if it all opens up in front of you, get the ball, all right. This guy's a pretty good player too, all right. So boom, we get him the ball. The X gets hooked up. And again, that guy's a pretty good player for us, all right. Now, I think the next one, okay, so this is us. Now, our quarterback reads this wrong, but I wanted to, show, wanted to show you guys how to get back to shallow. Again, these are younger kids, so I think we get a bust down here at the bottom, all right? So we really don't get the corner that we wanted. The corner's matching him. Safety's over the top. Linebacker is matching the back. Now, our quarterback kind of lucked into this one, but you can see the shallow coming into this window right there, okay? That's where we want the ball. Now, we got to catch it. Okay, but you guys can see where that window is going to be. So that was the only time that I could really find one getting back to the shallow. But you guys can see now where if the shallow were matched by this linebacker, now you've got that dig working back into that window real nice right in there. Okay. All right. So any questions about edge? Let me uh, make sure I still have this. All right. Okay. So. So the next one we're going to is double, all right? So now this is a little bit more of a drop back. We primarily use this out of 11 or 20 personnel, okay? So we've kind of got that tight end, off tight end, inline tight end, whatever. The reason that, that Coach Harper really liked this was for us was we got now a chip protection, okay? So whichever side the tight end was lined up to, he would tell the tackle that side, hey, I'm going to chip the widest rusher before I release, all right? So it was kind of a lot nice if you're playing those go daddies at five technique out there, you can give your tackle a little relief. So it started right there. So the tight end was always a chip hot, okay? Sometimes we hot him outside. Most of the time we hot him shallow, okay? And we told him, hey, you're the last read in this deal. So you make sure you get a good chip on the widest rusher before you leave, okay? So let's talk about the route. So anytime we got double, our inside receiver, our H, okay, he was running the middle read. So his landmark essentially was the hash, all right? He wanted to push like he was going to try to step on the safety's toes, and then he was going to basically bend off the near safety. And what we tell that guy is, you want to be quarterback friendly, okay? So what that meant for us is if the safety's tight, okay, then the angle had to be tighter, okay? We wanted to run away from that guy. If the safety was wide, okay, or deep, then we could have a little bit skinny of an angle, almost like a post, all right? But our whole deal was you had to basically be quarterback friendly off of this safety, okay? And then our tailback, okay, he always had a check swing protection. So it's six-man protection with a chip from our tight end, okay? Now, quarterback. So we're going to come up quarterback, oh, excuse me, the middle read guy. If it's middle of the field closed, it's an automatic dig. And again, it's a negative angle dig. So he was going to push to 10. There's a free safety in the middle of the field. I'm running to dig, lose the yard to the opposite hash again because I want to keep my teeth. Okay, so two safeties. I'm going to bend quarterback friendly off the near safety. One safety, automatic dig. Okay, outside routes or whatever we gave them. So it could be whatever you wanted in the drop back. I'll show you two or three of them uh, as we get going, but that's whatever we wanted, okay? Whatever you tag. So we would say like double depot and they would run the deep out, okay? Or we would say double, um, you could say double corner, okay? And you could get double corners on the outside. Whatever you want on the outside, you can tag, okay? So basically whatever your best reads are. For us quarterback wise, we came out, and we found the safety away from the, the, the middle read guy, okay? And what we said is, as you're taking a drop, if that safety works to the middle read, then now you're playing whichever one-on-one -on -one you liked on the outside, okay? Let me get back to this, all right? Whichever one-on-one -on -one you liked on the backside. So if this safety doubles to the side, then you're playing whichever one-on-one -on -one you like. Okay, if the safety works off the hash, okay, then we're throwing this middle read guy the ball, okay, based off of his bend off of this safety. 
All right, so again, let me show you some routes. So here we go, this is our favorite one to do, okay? We went double post corner right here, all right? So we're double post corner, all right? So what that allows us to do is now on the outside, we're gonna push to eight, break three steps to the post, and then we'll run a lazy corner out of this thing, okay? Both sides are mirrored. So when we say double, that talks to these three guys, and then the route talks to the outside receivers. So again, quarterback, we came up, we found this safe. First of all, we look outside. Which matchup do we like versus the corner, okay? We found the safety away from the middle read. He works to him. I'm throwing the outside receiver that I pre-snap read that I like the best matchup. If he works away, I throw the bend, all right? And then again, we had the chip hot late that, you know, honestly looks good on this stuff. And, you know, if we got all out blitz, we could check it down to him uh, late. Never hit it last year. All right, practice it. Never, never got it hit, okay? The other one that we run outside is double oaky, so our double deep out, okay? So we push up to eight to nine, speed cut this thing out. Again, the middle stays the same. They hear double, I'm chipped, hot, I'm running the middle of the field read, and then whatever route we give the outside guys, okay, is basically the, the routes that they run. All right, so here we go. Okay, again, we kind of do this in order, all right? So here's our middle of the field read runner. Like for him to figure out a way to get to the hash, so hopefully he stems the thing outside. On this one, I think we had double stutter. So it's double moves. So we pushed up like we're running a hinge and go, stutter, go. All right, this guy's got the middle read off of this safety. This safety's our read right here, quarterback. If he pushes this way, then we're going to throw one of the outside guys. If he stays outside the hash in a double mode, then we've got to be quarterback friendly on our bend right here. All right, so here we go. Again, quarterback peak this guy. He's off the hash in a position where he can double this receiver. So now we know right now we're taking it through this window to the middle of the field read. So again, pretty good job. And again, this guy's got to attack that safety of speed, all right? It's not the linebacker, it's a safety. Go try to step on toes, bend it away from him, be quarterback friendly. So I want to press, I'm eating up ground, making that guy backpedal, stick my foot in the ground. I want to be quarterback friendly on my bend, all right? Probably could have been a little bit more friendly, almost flattened this thing out. All right, but you guys can see the concept right here. So again, they're double covering our dude. Okay, we're getting one-on-one. -on -one. The safety's having to cover a lot of ground, find a window, throw the ball through there, all right? That was a big, big conversion for us on ESPN, all right? Um, let's go to this one, all right? So here we go. Again, good alignment now. Now, one thing I will say, if you've got a quarterback that his arm's not real strong, sometimes it helps to stack these guys. Um, just the way we played around with it, we really didn't stack them. We just condensed his split down. So now that way the quarterback felt like he had a lot more, uh, a little bit shorter throw to the field throw. That way we weren't always throwing it to the boundary. Okay, so here we come. Pre-snap safety's right here, okay? If he's off the hash in a position where he can double one, he's off the hash, then we're going right now to the bend. Okay, now I don't like the bend. He's bending off the linebacker. We'd have liked to have gone around this guy, but you guys can see this guy's so deep. He knows he's got to get into his route. Okay, again, now the safety's high. Okay, this safety's kind of off and low. Pretty good angle right there, right in that window. Okay, good job by the quarterback. Again, the quarterback, you can see on the snap, the quarterback's eyes go down here to the safety. If he's going to double away, then we've got to make that middle of the field read, uh, middle of the field read route work there. Okay. So here, let's go to now the outside route. Okay, so here we go. This is the, I think this is the double pout that I talked about. So this is double pout. Terrible alignment by this guy. Got to get to the hash, dude, so we have room, okay? Again, here's our safety that we're looking at right here. Let's see what he does, okay? He pedals and he's straight back down the hash, okay? He's straight off the hash. We don't like this. So now let's watch our route at the top. We should get a pose, kind of a lazy one, but we get a pose. One, two, three, and then back outside. All right, you can see quarterback hands are separated. Pretty good timing there. Bring him back downhill, shaping where you want him to go, quarterback. Uh, another look at it here. Down here at the bottom. Okay, good look. 
So again, here's our safety. Inside the hash is our tail. He stays inside the hash. We know we don't like the middle of the, rip, middle of the field uh, route. So here we go down here at the bottom, push, break. And the big key for us is when we break on our double moves, we want to look at the quarterback. Okay, we want to get our eyes to the quarterback because we feel like if the DB is looking through us to the quarterback and our eyes go back, now the DB is going to try to look and find the football. So I want to break, look at the quarterback, one, two, three, plant right back out of this thing. And again, you can see, man, we get this DB all kinds of turned around, a lot of room out here to throw the football. Give you guys another one here. Okay, so again, Decent, I would like for this guy to be just outside the hash and this guy to be just inside the hash. That way he can get a stem right here. You can see now this is the team that we hit it on, the very first one I showed you guys. Look at the safety's alignment now. Okay, now he's cheating back over that way. So now as I catch the ball, I'm pretty much done with that. All right, I'm, I'm done with the middle of the field route. Okay, so down here at the bottom, again, we get the post out. One, two, three, look for the football, plant right back outside. A lot of room to throw the football, okay? It's really hard for these linebackers to really elevate back underneath this thing because it throws so far down the field. Okay, I think this is now the double Oki. Yeah, so this is double, double speed cut out now, okay? So again, we just changed the route, set of run the double move. Again, now on this one now, quarterback, okay, we gotta have a little timing with this thing, all right? We're IDing this safety on the hash. Okay, he stays in there on the hash. We don't think we can get the middle of the field route. And boom, we want to take this thing outside. Receiver probably cheated this one a little bit. We want to push to eight and speed cut break that thing, all right? He's probably about a yard or two short, all right? And we'd like for him to run off the ball a little bit better. So push up. Okay, again, safety's taking away the middle of the field route. We're going to bang this one-on-one -on -one outside here. Okay, and again, this is one of our favorite things to do on third down. Because again, I didn't talk about this part, but we get the tight end chipping, okay? And the tight end actually on this one is wrong. He should chip the widest rusher, okay? We always wanna take some heat off of that. All right, good thing to tell, the tailback got back around on this one, but we wanna always wanna try to chip the widest rusher here. See, I got some questions in the chat right here. All right, double, got it. Um, Coach, is safety you're reading by from the run fake, trying to get the run fit? Do you have an automatic sight and adjust for the hop for the quarterback? Not really on the run stuff. We have some RPO stuff. We don't do a lot of uh, second and third level RPOs. We're trying to get to that deal. Um, you know, that could be something on the double. I think that if you wanted to flash fake the back, so like on this look right here, if we wanted to put the tail back over here and flash faking, that might be a good way to get the safety down. All right, if you want to hit that bend, a lot of times, you know, probably honestly flash faking back to him might get him down a little bit better. All right, so then you could hit that, hit that bend right there. We haven't really done as much on double, but it's a good idea. We just haven't been a big flash fake. Uh, we haven't been a big flash fake team. We've done it more on uh, like our four vert stuff. All right, but yeah, I, I like it. And again, especially it kind of, you know, I, I think our the whole deal on this thing is, is let me go back to the, the, the wide view, is who's your dude on this deal? Like, are you trying to really get him the ball? If you're really trying to get him the ball, then yeah, hey, maybe flash faking right at this guy might cause him to step down, get lost in the shuffle, and then you could throw the ball back behind his head. Like for us last year, this was kind of our guy. All right, so we wanted to just drop back. And then again, play off of him whichever way we wanted to go. All right. Um, let me go to one more here. All right, so curls, so this will be the last one, okay? So for us, curl now is a full field read, okay? So our routes are locked in by position. So our, our Y receiver knows he's got the middle curl, the X and the Z know they've got the outside curl, and then the H and the tailback are in the flat, okay? Uh, let me go to the progression of this thing. So quarterback-wise, okay, the first read is the middle curl, okay? So we want to go middle curl. What we've done is, if it's a tight end, what we've done is, because those guys haven't been blessed 
uh, with great speed at the places I've been, especially when Coach Harper took offensive linemen and made them tight ends for the run game. So we put that guy at five yards OTB, and we tell him it's like it's like a basketball set piece. Like you're going down on the low block and you're boxing out and you want the ball. You're running to five yards over the ball. If somebody's staying your way, you bang them and you show your numbers to the quarterback. If it's a wide receiver, okay, then we tell him basically we want, he's got a six to eight yard curl somewhere in the box, okay? And so his big rule is when you get clean air, share your numbers to the quarterback. Just know that you're the first progression and that, you know, the longer you take, the quicker the quarterback's going to move off of you, okay? The outside guys are running 12-yard curls, so we push to 12. There's no post break. It's 12. We're right back downhill to the quarterback. If somebody's between you and the quarterback, when you work back downhill, then you can work into a window. But your initial thought is I'm running right back out of my break downhill to the quarterback. We stole this from, I can't remember a clinic, probably like this one, but the H is going to run what we call a golf cart flat. So I tell our guys all the time, it's like the electric golf carts. When you push the gas, they go real fast. And then when they hit a max speed, they just kind of stay that speed. That's what we want. You, we want you to push off the ball fast for three to four yards. And as you turn to look for the ball, we don't want you to speed up. We just want you to maintain that speed. All right. That way you're not running out here, okay, out of bounds when we throw you the football. Okay, the biggest thing for us is the H and the tailbacks route have to be opposite. Okay, that way they're the flat control. Now, quarterback wise, it's the middle curl. Okay, and then it's outside curl to the flat. So that's why I tell them all the time you got to know your progression. It's middle curl, outside curl, flat. How do we know which way to go? Okay, so we talk in terms of you're going to work the outside curl to the side of the squeeze. Okay, so. Here's what I've walked into a little bit, uh, and it's worked for my guys at Fayetteville, and I haven't really ever done it this way, but we talk in terms of guys are L's on this side, and they're R's on this side, okay? And then in this look, with three linebacker look, we've got a middle, okay? So we never want to get covered one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So as we come in, if the squeeze happens, from an R, that tells us now our eyes work to the right side, okay? If we were to get like the old school, um, you know, even now like the 3-4 uh, the stuff. So let's say we had another linebacker right here. All right, let's just call him the Jack, okay? And then let's say the Will Blitz, okay? Well, if I were drawing this defense up, I would say, I tell my guys all the time, okay, that's an R, that's an R. That's an R, that's an R. They got four guys on the right side. They got four guys on the left, all right? Three, four look, right? Well, now if the, if the wheel were to blitz and the mic now bumps him from this side, well, that guy's an L, okay? So we're getting the squeeze now from the left. So now as I drop back, my eyes come to the outside, curl to the left, to the flat, okay? So that's kind of work for my guys. Again, other place I've been, we just talked about, hey, whichever side the squeeze has come from, but again, I've got some young kids in my room and stuff like that. So now we really draw a lot of stuff up. Like I would have a diagram like this and then right over the top of it, it's okay. Sorry. That's an L. That's an L. That's an L. He's an R. He's an R. He's an R. Okay. That's a middle guy. So we got a win versus him. But if this will were to really wall this guy, well, that's an R. So our eyes go out here. All right. So let me get some film. No, I bored you with that. So here we go. So here's the Y on the middle curl. Okay, Y on the middle curl. Hang on at quarterback. So we're taking a big three drop right here. If the Y is there, we stick it, boom, put it on him. Okay, he's there, boom, put it on him. All right, again, now we would talk in terms of in a quarterback room right now at Fayetteville High School, this guy's an R, this guy's an R, this guy's an R, this guy's an R. L, 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 okay. So if this guy's matched, if he's matched by this guy, then now our eyes come down here to the outside curl to the back. If he's matched by one of these guys, then now our eyes go outside curl to the left to the flat. All right, so again, that's just work. I don't know, we just kind of stumbled on. I was trying to find some way to reach those guys. Again, now receiver, once you get the clean air right now, stick your foot in the ground and show your numbers to the quarterback, you're open, don't keep running. All right, middle curl. You got to get there in a hurry because I tell my quarterbacks, if those guys are jacking around, 
get off of it now to the outside curl. Okay, so again, you can see the middle curl right there. All right, defense kind of opening up right here. So here we go, now we do it with the tight end. So the tight end is gonna be the middle curl guy. Again, he's OTB five yards over the ball. If he's open, take it. I would say he's open. So like right now at Fayetteville, my guys would get a negative if they didn't throw that guy the ball, all right? This quarterback felt like he was getting squeezed by this guy because his eyes came out to the left, all right? So now he's getting squeezed by this guy. Your eyes come out to the left. I'm going to hitch up in the pocket. I'm going to throw this outside curl right back in that window, okay? If I felt like 32 here was back in the window, then the ball goes to the golf cart flat lake, okay? So we talk in terms of big three, one, two, three, the middle curl, is he covered or not? If he's not covered, we should be hitching up in the pocket, working the outside curl right in that window. Okay, here we go again. So again now, middle curl, okay? We feel like he's getting squeezed by this guy. You can see the, the, the L right here opening up to him. So the middle curl's done. So now my eyes are gonna be on this outside curl, working right back in that window, okay? Again, if this guy were to be underneath the outside curl, ball goes to the back. Again, I know this has been around forever. We've gotten a lot of miles out of curl the past, gosh, probably 10 years, honestly. All right, so here we go. Again, doesn't matter the formation. As long as the H and the tailback are opposite, doesn't matter. Wise middle curl, outside guys have outside curls. Big three, one, two, three. Is the middle curl covered? Yes, I'm off of it. Okay, who did he get squeezed by? I would say he got squeezed by an R. Okay, this quarterback's probably wrong. He works to the top, okay, which he's wrong, but the reason this thing got in there, okay, you can see the outside curl is covered, dump the ball to the back. All right, so again, that's kind of why this one made it. Again, hopefully you guys get, if anything, when you guys make your cutouts for your kids, try to put them in the order of the progression. That way, when you're talking through here, the quarterback can see. First progression, first progression, first progression, second progression, second progression, second progression, third progression, third progression, third progression. All right, here's another one. Okay, got this one a little bit out of order. I lied to you guys. So middle curl, okay, he's double covered. He's getting squeezed right here by an L. So my eyes come to the outside curl. Boom, it's open, take it. All right, curl should work back to the quarterback, okay? I should be working out of this back here and the throw's not quite so low. All right, one more here and then I'll, uh, I'll put that title slide back up or if anybody has any questions. So here we go, middle curl coming from the left. He's getting squeezed from the left. We should be working the outside curl right here, right in that window, okay? So again, and on a lot of these things, guys, we've got double moves and stuff like that that, that we try to build in. So you know, if, like our automatic one off of curl is wheel. So if we were getting, you know, uh, corners really playing those curls tight, then we could wheel either the back or the uh, the H up the boundary. So again, uh, just wanted to say thanks to the Southern California Coach Association for having me on. Hopefully you guys got some of us. Guys, I'm like a football junkie. So if you guys ever need anything, you want the presentation, email me. Uh, if you just want to talk sometime, like I said, I'm in transit between Fayetteville and Tulsa quite a bit. Uh, shoot me a DM on Twitter. Uh, I'll give you my cell phone number. I'd love to talk football, and hopefully you guys got something out of it tonight. And uh, if I can ever do anything for you, feel free to reach out to me. Let's see if I have any questions on here. It doesn't look like I have any questions. So I think we're good. So if you got All right, something, Coach. feel free to reach out to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for coming out again. It was a good talk. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.